Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Grunnigy Games don't publish loot tables. This is one of the things that they've never done. They've always kept their secrets as to just how rare particular currency items are, and it's pretty rare for them even to make comments. For example, in 3.19 they commented that the drop rates of the Exalted Orb and the Divine Orb had long been the same in Path of Exile. This is something players didn't realise at the time, and it was something that was quite surprising that they would actually come out and say this. Well, they added a new feature in patch 3.25, Faustus and the Currency Exchange, and this new feature seems to have provided drop rates for every divination card in the game. These are not exactly precise, but they're more accurate than what we used to get from stacked decks, and they're something that is more accurate on the rarer cards than it is on the common cards. Let's go through exactly how it works. Firstly though, I need a really quick definition that's going to be important later. I'm going to say a divination card is common if its drop rate is no rarer than four times as common as the fortunate. I'm going to say a card is uncommon if it is between four times as common as the fortunate and five times as rare as the fortunate, and I'm going to say it's rare if it's more than five times as rare as the fortunate. There are 181 cards that are definitely uncommon, there are 165 cards that are definitely rare, and there's 11 cards that are on the boundary between uncommon and rare, and this method is not going to tell us which side they fall. Also, we're going to need some acknowledgements on this video. This has been a group effort. I've been heavily involved in this, but so have a number of other people, and it's been organised out of the Prohibited Library Discord. This is a Discord that's run by Poor Fishwife. It wouldn't be right for me to invite you to it because it's not my baby, but it's not hard to find an invite to it on the Path of Exile wiki. So if you're interested in being involved in this sort of research, that's where you would want to go in order to find out more about it. But the particular individuals I wanted to call out as being particularly helpful on this are Moxian, Nerdy Joe, and Poor Fishwife. They picked up some very big mistakes that I'd made when I first worked out exactly how all of these drop weights work, and they prevented me the embarrassment of publishing a video that would have had a very big mistake when people started looking at very common cards. More on that later, but thank you to all of those people and to everyone else that's been involved in trying different things on Prohibited Library. So let's quickly talk the history of what players have known about divination card drop rates. Back before 3.18, it was mostly down to just intuitive feel. If you went and farmed burial chambers for a while, you quickly came to the conclusion that the Doctor was not a common card. If you went and farmed the fields map, you quickly came to the conclusion that Reign of Chaos was a very common card. And note that divination cards have had reshuffles since this era, and so these drop locations are not necessarily currently accurate. In 3.18, the big discovery was working out exactly how stacked decks work. They use a formula that biases against the rarest divination cards in the game, but this biasing is weaker than it is in maps. For example, in patch 3.24, if the same map was able to drop both Reign of Chaos and The Fortunate, then The Fortunate would be about 96 times as rare as Reign of Chaos. However, from a stacked deck, it would be closer to 21 times as rare to pull a copy of The Fortunate out as it was to pull out a copy of Reign of Chaos. 96 was condensed down to 21. This formula was simply raising it to the power of two thirds, and this was enough to work out drop weights of all of the really common divination cards in the game, and to really nail them down accurately. Additionally, it gave us some good information about the drop weights of the rarest cards in the game. There would be players who would open literally millions of stack decks between them, and this was used in order to build up a table of just how rare some of those really rare cards were. For example, if you've seen estimates flying around that the drop weight of the Apothecary was 7 in patch 3.24, that's where this came from. It's because players learnt through experience, and the experience here was cracking literally millions of stacked decks, that about 1 in 18,000 stacked decks provided an Apothecary, and this information was used in conjunction with the formula we were talking about before to work out just exactly how rare that was. It also seemed that all of these Divination card drop weights were whole numbers. There were no fractions involved. That was something that we learnt back then. We're not 100% certain of that, but it seemed like it was accurate. However, patch 3.24 saw some changes to stack decks. Boss exclusive drops were removed, and this meant that if there were changes to the rarity of boss exclusive drops and their divination cards, this was not going to be something we'd be able to keep on top of through stack decks. Also, stack decks were just given out a lot less frequently in a number of mechanics. Heist in particular had its drop rate of stack decks decreased, and additionally, a number of other mechanics had the same treatment. And finally, people just got sick of opening tens of thousands of stack decks and meticulously tracking every drop, and putting it into a centralised spreadsheet somewhere. Enter the currency exchange, the new way 
of doing what we used to do by opening literally millions of stacked decks. I want you to go and open Path of Exile now. Pause this video, go and open Path of Exile, and pick a divination card you know is very, very common. For purposes of this, I'm going to suggest the Lover, which has a gold cost of 10 gold to transact. This is the second most common divination card in the game. Or you could look up Reign of Chaos, which costs 5. Or you could check up the Chains That Bind, which is a considerably rarer card than those two, but is still in the common category. Next, I want you to pick a card you know is uncommon. A good example here is the Fortunate. You'll see that it costs 175 gold to trade for on the currency exchange. Now do the same thing for a rare card. I'm going to suggest the Nurse, because I've looked it up in advance, and the cost is 450 to trade for it. And then pick one of the rarest cards in the game, Matroshka. The cost to transact that is 1,850. And you might pick some other cards as well, such as Who Asked, which has a transaction fee of 1,000. Or the Doctor, which has a transaction fee of 925. Or Fire of Unknown Origin, which also has a transaction fee of 925. Now you can keep exploring other cards this way, or you can be like Nerdy Joe and you can make a spreadsheet that lists every single card and its transaction fee in gold. When you do this, you'll notice there's some interesting gaps. You'll notice there's a number of cards that all share a transaction fee of 1,850 gold. Then the next thing down is 1,600. You might be thinking, these are some weird numbers. How did they come up with these? Well, that was the starting point for the big discoveries that were to come. Myself and a few other people started thinking that there might be a formula going on here. There might be madness behind the method. And that was what inspired me to check out the divination cards that award a clean headhunter. So this is only looking at the doctor, the nurse, and the patient. We're not considering the fiend, we're not considering the demon, because they award modified headhunters. Instead, we're looking at divination cards that directly award a normal headhunter. Now my intuition says that the doctor should be considered eight times as special as the nurse by grinding your games, and the nurse eight times as special as the patient. I've long thought the doctor has one eighth the drop rate of the nurse, and the nurse one eighth the drop rate of the patient. This has never been something that's been able to be proven, and it's always seemed plausible, but never proven by stacked decks. But what happens if we make the assumption that this is in fact correct? Well, let's go and have a look at the currency exchange costs to transact those three divination cards. The doctor costs 925 gold, the nurse costs 450, and the patient costs 225. You'll notice here that it halves at each step. Now, 925 halved is not exactly 450, it's exactly 462.5, but Faustus only works in multiples of 25, from 125 up to 1050. After that, he seems only to deal in multiples of 50 gold. Below 125, he deals in multiples of 5. So with that in mind, I noticed that for a card that's 8 times as special, the gold cost is twice as high. Well, that looks like a cube or cube root function there, and that was the first hint that we had of what would eventually be the formula that would work out how rare all the divination cards in the game are. But I did not consider that this was enough evidence to say everything was solved. At this point, I started thinking, what's a lot of other divination cards that fundamentally award the same thing? There's a lot of divination cards that award exalted orbs. There's also a few divination cards that award divine orbs. And additionally, we know from Grinding Your Games announcing it during the 3.19 teaser season that the drop rates of divine orbs and exalted orbs are the same. It would therefore make sense that the drop rates for cards that award divine orbs and exalted orbs would be about the same. And a quick check of Brother's Gift and Brother's Stash indicate that these do have the same gold cost to transact. So this seemed pretty fortunate. What if we were to check those divination cards and see what we find out? Well, if we assumed that every single one of these divination cards had a drop rate that was commensurate with the fraction of the relevant orb that it was. So for instance, the Hoarder is one twelfth of an Exalted Orb, so that would make sense that it would have 12 times the drop rate of whatever a divination card that awarded one Divine Orb or one Exalted Orb and was a set of one would be. Likewise, it would make sense that it would have 60 times the drop rate of the Brother's Stash and also of the Brother's Gift. Was the same cube root function repeated? And the answer was that it was and it was a perfect fit. There was not one exception. There was not one thing where I needed to fudge the figures to make it fit. Everything fit perfectly. I also tested Orbs of Annulment because I know they are two and a half times rarer than Exalted Orbs and also two and a half times rarer than Divine Orbs. There's a bunch of evidence for that beyond the scope of this video, but if you look at the Demigod's Wager and the Seeker Divination cards, you'll find that they also perfectly fit. Everything just worked. I was not expecting the smallest number in this column here to be larger than the largest number in this column here, unless the formula was exactly right. This would not happen by chance. I thought I'd cracked it at this point. 
I'd even gone as far as to record a first draft of this video that will not be released because it was riddled with errors. At that point, however, I started talking to some other people about it, and I chatted with Nerdy Joe, I chatted with Paul Fishwife, and Moxian was involved in the chat as well, and they realised that I hadn't checked any common cards at all. I had only checked uncommon and rare cards. Everything seemed right when we were looking at the uncommon and rare cards, but when you started looking at the common cards, this line no longer was a fit at all. Instead, it was pretty clear there was a formula break there. At that point, it was Moxian's suggestion to do a log-log chart that found us the exact formula. At least, I believe it's the exact formula. You'll notice one major outlier here, and this is Unrequited Love. Unrequited Love is a divination card that has had a drop rate estimate circulating around. I don't know where this came from, I think it might have been 3.24 stack deck info, but this drop rate estimate is wrong. Unrequited Love is much rarer than the Apothecary, it is much rarer than the Doctor, and it should be somewhere to the left, somewhere around about here, instead of being in this weird spot here. Side note, don't farm Unrequited Love. It's rarer than the Apothecary, it's cheaper than the Apothecary, it's better to farm something else. So what it turned out was that for the 77 most common divination cards in the game, Grunnigy Games had simply changed the formula and made their gold costs cheaper than they would have otherwise been. We came to the conclusion that Grinding Gear Games had worked out the gold cost on uncommon and rare cards by taking a constant x, we didn't know what this constant was, and divided it by the cube root of the drop weight. Or alternately, if you want to rearrange this to be more used to us, because we know the gold cost, we don't know the drop weight, the drop weight was then equal to another constant y divided by the gold cost cubed. For example, for the Doctor, which has a gold cost of 925, this would mean that it's Y divided by 925 cubed. For the Divination card Who Asked, which has a gold cost of 1000, yes, this card is rarer than the Doctor, that means that it would be Y divided by 1 billion. For the Apothecary, it would be Y divided by 1.331 billion, because that card costs 1100 gold to transact. Our initial thought was that Y might be 9 billion, but then I thought there was some evidence that this was not correct. And that's because we thought everything was whole numbers in the way that divination card drop rates worked. With the old stack deck research, we'd been able to reasonably solidly conclude that everything was an integer, that there were no fractions involved. And I assume that this was intended by Grinding Your Games. We don't see any other drop weights or mod weights and the like that are fractions in the game. Everything seems to be a whole number. And so I started looking for other possible Y values, ones that would make everything be a whole number. Now, Enter that jump from the rarest divination cards in the game being 1850 gold, and the next category down being 1600 gold to transact. This implied a 50% gap in rarity. So this implied that the old man and the price of loyalty were 50% more common than the rarest divination cards. The demon, assassin's gift, price of devotion, house of mirrors, and others. So what if we assumed that the drop weight of the rarest of these divination cards was two, exactly two, and then the second tier of cards would be drop weight 3. That actually made everything fit. Under that assumption, with y equal to 13 billion, or for that matter any number from 13 billion up to 13 billion 181 million, it just works. I tried a bunch of other numbers and nothing else worked unless you go up as high as 26 billion. Now from having a look at uncommon cards, cards like the fortunate, this actually implies that their drop weights might actually be a bit higher than they used to be, specifically about 44% higher than they used to be. This actually makes a bit of sense, because every time Groningen Games have made Divination Scarabs more common or better than they used to be, they've then gone ahead and nerfed the drop rates of Divination cards pretty much across the board. This was really noticeable a couple of times when they made the Doctor much rarer. The Doctor was a card that there was the most historical tracking of, because it was so important for so long to Path of Exile's meta, and as a result it was pretty clear that there was a big drop in the drop weight of the Doctor between 3.13 and 3.14, just after 3.13 had made Divination Scarabs much more accessible than they'd been before, and then there was another one between 3.18 and 3.19, just after 3.18 had made those Divination Scarabs more common than they'd been before. So with Grinding Games nerfing Divination Scarabs really hard in 3.25, it's not that the new ones aren't good, it's just that they're not the massive loot multipliers the old ones were, it actually made a lot of sense that this nerf to the drop weight of Divination Cards might be reversed, and that's why I speculated that there may have been a 44% across the board buff in those drop rates of Divination Cards. Not sure of the exact number, but something along those lines. The thing that made me think 13 billion was very likely was that this gave very nice number estimates for the drop rates of all of the Divine Orb and Exalted Orb cards. And this might have been something Grinding Your Games used to normalise them. 
This makes divination cards for divines and exalts have a drop weight of 300 divided by whatever fraction of a whole orb one single card represents. For example, the hoarder is 1 12th of a whole orb, so 300 divided by 1 12th is 3600. Brother's gift is 5 entire orbs, so 300 divided by 5 is 60. So the final formula as I understand it, for every common card, this is the 77 most common divination cards in the game, they all have a Faustus cost of 120 or less. The card drop weight is very close to 1 million divided by its gold cost. For uncommon and rare cards, this is 125 and up gold cost, the card drop weight is a whole number that is very close to 13 billion divided by the cube of the gold cost. So for example, for the Doctor, 13 billion divided by 925 cubed, this is very close to the whole number 16, so 16 is likely to be the drop weight of the Doctor. For the divination card Who Asked, which has a Faustus cost of 1000, this divination card likely has a drop weight of exactly 13. It's also worth noting that Grandier Games calculate this in reverse and Faustus rounds down to multiples of 25 or even 50 when the cost gets a bit higher. So do keep that in mind when you're working this out. Just because the gold cost is actually listed as 925 doesn't mean it's exactly 925, it might be 937, but it's definitely less than 950. This is the source of the error bars that we get when we start looking at the uncommon cards. For example, the fortunate. 175 is a gold cost, but it's actually anywhere from 175 up to 199.9, and we're cubing it, so that means that we end up with quite a range in the drop weight of the fortunate. That said, I'm pretty confident that the drop weight on this card is exactly 1800. What does this mean about the best cards to farm? So if you're in solo self found, unless you are an extremely devoted slash obsessed player, you probably don't want to target farm any divination card that has a 600 or higher gold cost. These are going to be an ordeal to compile a set of. However, if you're a trade league player, the cards that I think come out the best, and I want to do a little bit more research on this, but I believe the Apothecary is the single best card with a drop weight presumably of 9. Second best is Fire of Unknown Origin, which has a drop weight of 16. In equal shared third place is every single divination card that awards Divine Orbs. Doesn't matter which one it is, whether it be Divine Beauty, whether it be The Fortunate, whether it be Brother's Gift, these will all be equal in their value. Surprisingly in position 4 is the divination card Progeny of Lunaris, which awards Dying Sun. And then in position 5, quite a bit behind that, but not unfathomably far behind, is Strand's new divination card, I See Brothers, which was removed from the map bosses and is now available from every monster in the zone. This, however, is going to change as the league economy evolves. I want to point out that the Mirror Shard cards are not nearly as good as a lot of online calculators are saying. Those online calculators have taken as gospel the drop rate of 13 for Unrequited Love, and I believe that that was just based on someone getting an extreme hot streak on pulling Unrequited Love out of Stack Deck's last league. I don't think that's accurate, I think it's just the result of a small sample size. And yes, even a quarter million stacked decks can be a small sample size subject to large statistical errors when you're dealing with a divination card as rare as Unrequited Love. In any case, I am personally convinced that Unrequited Love is rarer than the Apothecary because of all the analysis we've talked about here, and as a result, with the Apothecary being more valuable, there's no reason to farm Unrequited Love. I know though that a lot of people don't like jackpot chasing, they don't like having a scenario where they can go 10 play sessions in a row getting none of the drop they're chasing, and if you're in that category, the fortunate is not a terrible divination card to farm, it's not that far behind the better two, and it's definitely the one that's most suited to your play style, because you're just not going to have play sessions where you don't get at least one copy of the fortunate, probably many many more than one of them. Anyways, that is my pick for the biggest player discovery so far of patch 3.25 and also of the year 2024. I'm going to leave it there. May your divination card farming have interesting results.